Hello. In this video, we're going to start um, an exploration of methods. Um, this video is going to be a, a lot of me talking. I'm going to be commenting on uh, some main points to think about with methods, some design questions. By no means are you to absorb everything I'm saying here, but when I, in the later videos, when I actually write some methods, I'm going to be coming back to ideas we talk about here. So I think the best thing to do with this is just try to actively listen and really make note of the vocabulary I'm using and some of the, the small subtle points. Okay, now oh, don't mind my picture over here. I'll explain what this is about in a second. So methods. Methods are sometimes called functions, depending on what language you're using. Uh, for example, if you're programming C++, we call them functions. If you're programming in Java, we typically call them methods. If you're learning about functions in mathematics, um, a method works just like a function in mathematics. Um, something goes into the function, so in computer science that's the argument or the parameter. We'll distinguish between those two words later. Some rule is applied in computer science, that's the actual code you write in your method. And, and then something comes back out. Now, just a, a little subtle point here is something doesn't always have to come back out, but often something will, and that's called the return value. Methods are essentially small segments of code which perform some specific task. You're already using them in a lot of your programming. Often you don't care how the task is completed, just that it is. Methods are written inside of a class, and we'll see an example of this down below. The next thing to, to know is that in, in this set of videos, we're, we're looking at what are called class or static methods. There are some other methods called instance methods, which will be explored later, but we're interested specifically in what are called class or static methods, and they always have the static modifier in their header. Um, if the code accessing the method is inside the same class, the method can be called by its name. If the code accessing the method is outside the class, the method can be called using the class name dot the method name. So this is where my fun little picture comes in. So I'm a teacher. Um, and so imagine I was the I was like the main method. So there's some code running on here. If I needed to need student A, student B, or student C to do something, I'm in the same classroom as them. So I would just say student A student B, student C, and they would go and do what needs to be done, possibly returning something to me. However, let's say I wanted to get student D, E, or F to do something. Well, in that case, notice they're in a different classroom or a different class. So what I would have to do is I, just, I would have to say g2.d, g2.e, or g2.f. If the method is written in a different class, which it often is, you have to indicate the class name before the method name to tell it where to find that code. And a perfect example is, is accessing the math methods. So here's a little um, segment from the math class online documentation. And this is a method called the absolute value method. The parameter is an integer, so we need to give it an integer. And it returns an integer. So if I want to actually invoke this method or call it, invoke and call mean the same thing, I would say math, which is the name of the class, dot abs, which is the name of the method, and then I would pass it the value 10. And then it would return the value and put it into x. Programmers like to share code, and so the first thing we want to talk about as well is commonly used naming conventions. Now these naming conventions don't have to be observed. It's almost like an etiquette piece. We do this so when we're working with other people, we understand what they're doing. So a couple conventions that are often used. Uh, methods names will start with a small case letter. Subsequent words are capitalized. So for example, if I had a method called find sum, the method name would be written find and then capital S-U-M. The name should describe what the method does. It shouldn't be some obscure word like gobbledygook, but it should actually be descriptive. So if someone's using your method, they, they can use some common sense to figure it out. Remember, classes have lots of methods, and there's no way to memorize them all. But if you design your class such that methods have understandable names, then someone using it can easily find those methods. Um, finally, Names often start with a verb followed by a noun. There are lots of common etiquette rules which help programmers share code more effectively. These are just a couple of them. Um, th there's lots of idiosyncrasies that, that kind of pop up as you program more, but we won't get into those in this video. We'll have a video about some other kind of more f fine detailed rules a little later on. 
So we want to write our own methods. So when we write our own method, I always like to think about two design questions you have to ask yourself. The first question is, does my method return anything? Some methods will go and just print something to the screen, where perhaps it prints out a menu, maybe it pauses the computer for a moment. But often methods actually give something back for the program to process. So I like to kind of classify methods into two types. The first type are methods that don't return something and methods that do return something. So the first thing when you're designing a method you want to ask yourself is, does my method give anything back to the program for it to process? The second question you want to ask yourself is, does my method need anything? We often say, what are the parameters? So a method is a segment of code that just goes and does something for the programmer. Again, we don't care how that is necessarily done, it just needs to get done. So for example, if I had the method find sum, I need to give it two numbers to add. I don't care how it adds the numbers, I just need to, to know that I need to give it two numbers and it's going to return a number back to me. Um, so before the program as I can run it, it needs to know in advance what the parameters are. What does it need in order to complete the task? So we're just going to take a moment here and talk about terminology. Two words that will come up quite regularly, parameter and argument. These words are often used interchangeably, but they actually mean different things. And I'm a really big believer of, of learning the proper use of terminology right away, because if you do that, it makes later concepts more accessible. So a parameter, the parameter are the types of values the method must take, whereas the argument is the actual value we put into the parameter. So if we, again, take that example of find sum, Find sum needs to take two integers. So if we called the first one int a and int b, those would be the parameters. The values I actually put into a and b would be called the sorry, the arguments. So right here, this is the method that would find sum. And we'll look at how you set up a method down below in a moment. But public static int, it's the return type. Find sum is the name. Int a and int b, this is what we need. A and B are called parameters. So if I had some code to invoke or call this method later on, I could say int x equals find sum 1, 2. We're going to take the value 1 and put it into A. We're going to take the value 2 and put it into B. These are called the arguments. The arguments are 1 and 2. In this next line, the arguments are 3 and 4. And you can, of course, see the video on writing the find sum method as well. That's the next video in this playlist. So let's just quickly look at a, a generic example. Um, here's a, a class that I've written. And so what I want you to understand from this is where do we put methods? So a class always starts public class sum class. We don't necessarily need the word public here, but I'll write it in this case. So we have our main method, public static void main string args. Um, we don't Again, we, we're probably starting to get a better appreciation of what this means, but we don't fully understand it yet. So then if I wanted to write my own method, I would put it not inside the, inside the main method, but outside the main method, but still inside the class. So if this is the start of my class, and this is the end of my class, I have to be sure that my method is in between those two braces. So a method header always looks as the follows. It always has the word public static. Again, we don't really know what the word public means, and we'll explore that later. But because we're writing right now only what are called class or static methods, it has to have the word static. The next thing in the next term in the header is the return type. So what does this method return to you? If it returns nothing, we put the word void. And we'll see an example of that a little later. So the word void means nothing. Next is the name of the method. And then we have parentheses. And then we list all the parameters. And the parameters consist of the type and the name. So we could have as many parameters as we want. So we have parameter 1, parameter 2, up to n parameters. And remember, a parameter consists of a type and a name. So I have to say int a, double b char c string word and then inside the method we have the method block that actually does what needs to get done and then we end the method 
So for example, if we go back to that find some example, the method is going to be contained within, within the class. It's going to start with the word public static. Find sum is going to give an integer back, so the return type is an int. The name is find sum, and the parameters are int a and int b. And then the code would look like return a plus b. And return is a new word that we're starting to see, and what that essentially means is give back. So as soon as the method sees the, 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 the word return, it stops and just spits out that value. So here, if a was 1 and b was 2, this method would return 1 plus 2, which is 3. So again, I've said a whole bunch in this video, and it's probably worth watching again and just kind of trying to absorb a couple of the terms and such um, and some of the ideas. But in the next couple videos, what we're going to do is we're going to actually write some methods, and we're going to constantly come back to the ideas that we've talked about in this video. I hope it helped.